Alex back. Yeah, I mean, it's great. Just um, I think I mentioned before the game, you know, there's probably that first stint there. I thought he got better as the game went on and probably felt a little bit more comfortable. But just even his voice out there as a veteran, veteran guy, um, helping the team, you know, just his presence out there, his voice communicating during dead balls, timeouts. I think that stuff has been helpful. You know, I think the last few games when, you know, sometimes for Malcolm, you know, or Alfonso or the guys, you know, there's that just to have a voice with some of the new guys, I think helps. And certainly Alex provides that. Is it a coincidence that you guys scored 24 points off turnovers in his first game back? I mean, I know it wasn't all just because of him, but I mean, he, he does have that impact on your defense, does he not? Yeah. You know, I think we did a better job defensively. Um, you know, he certainly is really, really good um, playing the elbows, playing the post. We generally, you know, have them on bigger people, you know, especially with a team like this. Um, you know, I thought all the guys' act activity was really good. I mean, Garland's a hard cover. He's really gifted off the dribble. I thought Isle worked really, really hard. And I thought our whole team worked hard defensively. Um, but, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Alex's ability to communicate on defense, to recognize when to switch, when to do certain things, when to front the post, recognizing what's coming. He can anticipate things. So, you know, him coming back certainly, I think, helps our defense and makes us better defensively. There's no question about that. What have you thought, um, you know, you have a complete makeshift backcourt, you know, uh, completely new, and, you know, they both uh, played well. What do you think of their play overall and very efficient offensively? Kobe and uh, Io? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I thought Kobe had a really, really good first half. Um, you know, was really playing downhill. He even sprayed the ball out. We generated some really good shots, good looks. Um, you know, even the ones he didn't take, he generated shots for others. Um, you know, I thought Io did a really, really good job, especially in that second half, uh, making some plays at a couple drives and dump off passes. But I thought both those two guys worked really hard defensively. And I thought offensively, they made really, really good choices. Uh, you know, I think against their defense, because they're so long and they protect the rim so well, you, know, you got to get some penetration. We had some plays that we probably, you know, should have passed out that we tried to finish on. But for the most part, I thought those two guys playing in the teeth of the defense helped generate good looks for us from the perimeter. Their, their pairing came about, you've said this, because of injuries, Io and Kobe. I mean, yeah. that's when you started trying them together more. Yeah. What, what, is, what has impressed you the most about them playing together? Well, you know, I think with Zach being out and Alex was out, just the number of guys we had out, I just like watching film the last couple, a couple games, I think there's been a lot on, you know, Kobe's plate offensively where he knows he needs to help with the scoring but he's also at the point and he's having to generate offense for others. And I always think that's a hard, you know, balance for a guy as gifted as a scorer as Kobe, you know, is. And I, I think, you know, talking to him, you know, even today at shoot around and, you know, slide Nile maybe to the point and getting him off the ball a little bit and letting him, you know, take some actions and really be aggressive and try to play downhill and just make the right read and right play. Um, you know, I think those two guys playing with each other has been been good considering we haven't really had a chance to do it a whole lot, but the pairing of both of them have been good and both of them are unselfish, both of them get downhill, um, you know, and, and Kobe's been able to score at a pretty high level for most of his career in the NBA. And we just wanted to get him aggressive and not have to think about, you know, what do we play we're running, who's got a hot hand, who's got going and, you know, maybe help Io with a little bit more play calling from the bench and try to help Kobe to be who he is as a player and, you know, help Io, you know, just offensively be aggressive. But, you know, again, ball comes out to him, play downhill, play in the paint. And, you know, he made some big shots to break some momentum plays for us. I thought there, you in the fourth, they were making a run. He made a couple big, big threes that helped. That said, uh, that said you know, when they got there to one in the fourth quarter there, you, you, you put the ball in DeMar's hands. And DeMar made several plays, scored, you know, kind of took, a, you know, both yeah. playmaking and scoring. What was your thinking at that point? When we put him back in the game or just what he was and doing? DeMar got the, you know. Yeah, you know, I, I thought, yeah, I thought, listen, he's been so elite at making shots. I think even if you ask him, there was probably a couple shots that he took that were really tough. As much of a great shot maker as he's been. A couple of them were tough. Like he tried to shot fake, got a couple, you know, fouls. They didn't leave their feet and he kind of shot it over them. They were tough shots, but he's like smart. You know, he understands, okay, here's how they're guarding. This is what they're doing. And I thought his playmaking was really, really good. You know, when he got all the way to the rim, you know, was where he got fouled and finished. But there were several plays that, you know, he sprayed the ball out and generated some shots. And to your point, it's a one-point game. He hits Iowa, hits a couple of guys. He hits Vooch. And I think that's the greatness of him as a player that – okay, you know, I'm getting off tough shots here, 
there's going to be some other guys open and, you know, I'm going to find them. And he did that. He distributed and made the game easy for those guys where they were in catch and shoot situations in that, you know, last five minutes of the fourth quarter. What do you think was behind Vooch bouncing back the way he did after the, uh, you know, Vooch is a pro, um, you know, I think, you know, in the Memphis game, you know, he, I, th I think one of his biggest challenges is, in, you know, just being around him is he holds himself to such a high standard. You know, he really does. And I think for him, there's just so many different things he does, whether he's missing or making shots. Certainly it's a bonus for us when he makes some shots, but the rebounding, the, the rim protection on a block on Allen was a big play. The, the, um, the pick and roll coverage, the facilitating, the passing, there's so much to his game. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, as he finds his way, he's had some really, really good shooting nights and, you know, some other nights that haven't been so great, but I thought he was really good tonight. He scored around the basket. He didn't shoot the ball particularly well from three. He made one late in the corner, which was, you know, a big shot, but, you know, I got a lot of confidence in him, not only his ability offensively, but just his IQ, you know, and I think for him, he holds himself at a really high standard. And I think that's why he's been such a great player in this league for such a long time. But when we get him playing like he did, did in Boston, you know, and even tonight where he's kind of, regardless if he does not score him, he's kind of getting everything into the game. It just helps our group and it really takes pressure, you know, because a lot of the, a lot of the plays tonight to me where we were getting catch and shoot shots, which is with this group, with the number of guys that we got out, we need some of that. And he can help facilitate and generate that for us. Now I'm, um, you know, I'm aware you won the game. I'm sorry. I'm aware you won the game. Right. But so it's not directed exactly at that, but they're unusually large, big team, maybe the biggest in the league, probably right. with Mark and that small part. And your first three substitutions were guards, basically. And then in the second half, when you started, you took your taller guy out and started a smaller guy around. So I was just curious about the yeah. thinking about that. So the first three subs were guards. Basically, Who else are we going to put in? I don't know. You got we we have no other big guys. Tony Bradley is the only big we have. We have no bigs, and that's the challenge. And, you know, I thought um, – no, 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 no. I get I, – I totally – I don't I don't take it that way at all. I'm just saying there's not really any size on the bench to put in. I don't mind criticizing <laughs> I'm but. sure. There's no size on the bench to put in there. So I think what you're trying to do is someone like Alfonso and Malcolm, they're so new, they're still trying to catch up. We tried to put Alfonso out there early just to put some size, you know, on Lowry. Um, and he did a good job when he was out there. I kept with Troy because I thought Troy was playing really, really well at that point in time. And getting Alex back was certainly going to take somebody's minutes away. But the reality is, you know, outside of Tony Bradley and, um, and Vooch, all of our guys are guards. The rest of our team is guards. So whether a guy is six foot four or six foot five or six foot three or six foot two, it's just kind of what we have right now. And, you know, you try to figure out matchups. I like the you know, I thought love caused some problems for us. So I like throwing Alex back there on love. We started the game with DeMar on Mobley, you know, and he kind of got into the teeth of our defense a little bit. So we just kind of adjusted a little bit. I thought Troy was really good defensively, not to say that Alfonso wasn't, but we just started, decided to start him, you know, in the third quarter. Um, but it's just really more like, you know, one, how do you keep Vooch and DeMar fresh and not have them where they're playing 41 and 42 minutes? You're on a minute restriction with Alex. You know, I think Matt Thomas gave us some good minutes, but you want to find matchups for him as well. Iowa's was pretty much going to be on Garland. So you get caught with like Malcolm's down there playing love, you know, and uh, we could, we could have gone with Alfonso in that situation, uh, but we wanted just to see what it looked like with him on him, you know? So we just kind of just try to do some different things, but I mean, the rally is our roster right now with, because of all the injuries to the power forwards with Derek, with Javante, with Patrick, and not to say that they're big guys, but certainly, you know, they're all six, seven to six, eight, six, nine. And when they're not there, you know, we become really, really small. So nothing, McKinney uh, had nothing health wise that he didn't play. Mm -hmm. No, no. He, uh, you know, I thought he was fine to start the game. Um, you know, I, I, I just thought Troy gave us really, really good minutes and I kind of stuck with him and just tried to come back with him uh, to start the, the third quarter. But, you know, Alfonso was fine and he's done a good job for us and has given us some really good minutes. Uh, but I really, really liked the way the way Troy played and what he was doing defensively and what he was doing offensively. Good. I know you just came back, but it's probably cooking option. Yeah, I think coming back, it is, you know, just, you know, a little bit. He would have been on a minute restriction. We actually thought about starting him uh, in the third quarter, you know, against uh, Mobley. But, you know, the one thing I felt like is we we have to score. That's the biggest thing with, with Zach and Lonzo out. Um you know, even with Alex as a playmaker who, who has been out and not knowing what to expect tonight, 
you know, we, we, when, when Vooch and DeMar haven't had really big nights for us, you know, we haven't really scored a lot of points. So, um, you know, we really thought about, okay, do we put Ty, uh, maybe Tyler on, you know, Mobley, but I thought we scored pretty well. We had a pretty good offensive rhythm flow. I didn't know what that would do to us because, you know, Tyler's pretty much around the basket player and, you know, now you have in the space Vooch and you take away some of Vooch's role and you make him a perimeter player. And I just felt like we were going pretty good offensively. I just thought maybe starting Troy in that third quarter uh, would give us, you know, some full floor spacing and kind of keep everybody in their same roles. Okay, thank you.